So have you run into any problems with friends or family or extended family being that a spiritual or at least the earthbound path is not really a common thing, especially in Pennsylvania? Um, no, my, my family, I mean, I was, I was raised, uh, Christian and, um, you know, I really, I really do believe that, you know, in terms of belief in general, that everything's okay. And, you know, I don't, I, I personally don't, you know, necessarily while I talk about all sorts of different themes, I, like I said, I don't really sort of, um, define myself one way or the other. And so, I haven't ever really, I think, ticked anyone off to a point where I've said this is wrong or this is right or something like that. Um, so I've not had any issues. And, and my family, for the most part, really isn't practicing. You know, they don't go to church or anything like that. So um, I've not really had too many issues. I mean, certainly on on different, um, you know, like blog, like web um what do you call it? YouTube comments and things like that. The general public, I've definitely gotten all sorts of, you know, like that I'm a devil worshiper or a cult leader or various things like that. As an offshoot of that question, uh, have you ever had any trouble breaking into the business world or the music world because of your overall look or spirituality? Not really. I'm all about sort of being conscious of what's going on in the world. So I even think, you know, on some level that because I, I do talk about, you know, real issues that are happening and I almost just become kind of, I guess, I don't want to say categorized, but sort of put into the realm of that, you know, I'm a conscious rapper, or I'm a conscious artist. And that sort of is, is more understood. Um, but, you know, I, I, it's not like I'm getting calls every day from major labels trying to sign me. And, you know, I don't know if that's because I have some you know, off the beaten path sort of messaging, or if it's just, you know, because of there could be a million reasons, you know, I have gotten calls, but, um, in the past over the last like six or seven months, but, um, you know, I think that my general topics are not really something that would be played on the radio. And, and therefore I'm kind of not really part of the conversation, regardless of what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about partying and you know violence and misogyny and sex so it's kind of you know I'm not really falling into the realm of a lot of the mainstream music in in, in paganism we have sort of an, an interesting relationship with, with musicians we either have people who tend to be very folky who are who are very hardcore pagan and then we have people that we embrace that kind of hold us at arm's length. And mm -hmm. you're sort of you're sort of on on the liminal edge of that. You know, you're reaching out to the pagan community like you reached out to PCP. But mm -hmm. you also have sort of a broader message and you don't uh, solely identify with the pagan label. Would right. you be interested in 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 engaging with the pagan community by going to like pagan festivals and con and conventions? Is that something that you would be interested in doing? Yeah, actually, I would. I mean, I've I've always been drawn to it. I've always been um, enamored and and like felt a connection to to that kind of um, community and to the the sort of traditions that you do. I mean, I think I'm very into it. I, I it's like it's one of those things where for a long time I've been I've been interested in so many different things that I haven't. And they to me they all fall under the realm of sort of. Um, oneness spirituality kind of you know um i don't want to say anti-religion but just kind of the the other side and so i'm i'm very interested in it and i feel drawn to it and i have felt drawn to it um you know especially I, I would just love to kind of get you know direct feedback um from that community as well and just kind of like what's important you know to me it's all about in terms of people in the world like what's important to to you what you know what matters and that's you know hopefully one day I can be someone that can through my music really represent all sorts of different voices and you know yours is a voice that I really highly respect and find a lot of my own soul calling to you know as, as if it, a lot of it feels like past life in a way to me and so you know um yes I'm very interested is there's been some discussion lately about 
whether or not Lady Gaga is is promoting goddess spirituality, especially with her latest Born This Way video. And you and you talk about Isis and and I kind of think that that's a powerful thing because a lot of pagans really venerate feminine divinity. So mm-hmm. yeah, so if I were to say something, you know, that sort of relates to my own practice that I think is cool that you do and that I would kind of like to see you you explore more, it would be that that idea of feminine divinity. Mm-hmm. Now, see, I have a different take on that because of the Egyptian base. The idea of bringing up Isis um, is kind of a hot topic. And I know that this is not uh, what a lot of the New Age goes with, is that Isis is not pleasant. <laughs> she She's kind of bloodthirsty. And um, I think with me, the idea is making sure that The spirituality is one thing, but I also have a focus in researching um, anthropology and myths and making sure that people are getting the right idea rather than going to the quickest New Age book and going, oh, Isis, she's like the mother of all when they're missing out that she, she raised her kid to be a psychopath. She mm. she went and and poisoned her father, so right. that's part of my issue. Well, you know, mm. she was also though she was also characterized as like mother of all and mother of many names. So she's got sort of that dual thing, but a lot of goddesses do. Yeah, but that's after the Greeks took it over. Yeah, yeah. When she like her <laughs> when she went on her international tour to put it in music terms. Yeah. Well, after. <laughs> After um, the whole murder thing with with Horace and Set, um, her son chopped her head off and put the head. And her father was like, "Oops, hmm, to teach you to be humble, we're going to stick the head of a cow on you." And that's when she actually calmed down. So there, there's two aspects, and everybody seems to forget that there are two, not just the calm version. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I really think that um, I, I totally get where you're coming from on that, and I I've definitely looked into ISIS on on many different levels, um, and really the reason that that was there, um, and that I chose her is, I mean, I I think every at least in my study of goddesses and goddess culture and all that kind of stuff, there's always like part of why I feel more drawn to feminine divinity is because of this sort of dualistic side like there's a good and a bad you know and maybe it's just because I'm you know reading tarot versions and things like that and that I'm seeing more of both sides but um you know I just really resonate with her as being powerful and you can use your power for good and bad and you know I always just kind of loved the story of her putting her you know her husband back together and all that kind of stuff but I I do understand what you're saying and and I and I think for myself as I move forward when I am using things you know words and um specifically archetypes and goddesses and things like that I'm you know I might do a little bit more research to really make sure that I'm 100% positive but to be honest with her I really felt that way I really felt that a connection and I mean every time I I can't even describe all of the weird synchronicities and times where Isis has kind of like come into my consciousness, whether it was through a a tarot card reading or whether it was someone telling me a story about it or whatever. I I always felt some kind of connection to her. And that song was actually written when I went for the weekend to a a weekend-long conference to see the hugging saint, Amma. I don't know if you're familiar, but she's a living saint, um, from India and she, you know, that experience was just totally amazing. And then I saw Ani DeFranco that evening and I just felt like I was just surrounded, it surrounded by goddesses. And that song sort of came out like Isis just, you know, it wasn't like I thought about it. Oh, I want to write Isis or I don't want to, you know, just that song I felt just divinely inspired and wrote it actually during the concert. So you know, but I, I do I do think that there, that I have a responsibility, especially now that I'm in a position where people are, are paying attention, that I need to make sure that I'm aware of, of the full story. 
so that then I can, you know, I might still make the decision to use it, to use whatever it may be controversy or not, but at least I'm fully aware. I think that your li- the way you put your lyrics together and your sound is incredible. Um, but I wasn't really sure about the lyrics themselves and if you were just sort of going off of what was popular at the time and had done a little bit of research and seeing where the culture was going. Um, I think that was my biggest worry, um, whether or not this was going to be a quote-unquote fighter view. I don't know if you had heard that uh, that <laughs> term in any of our past podcasts. Um, but I think that I think this is turning out to be a, a very good interview and um, no, you're not just a poser trying to get uh, attention. So mm-hmm. I've been very, very happy about uh, this interview. So I I'm just want to throw that out to you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that very much. And, um, you know, I, I can definitely assure you that I, it was almost like the opposite. I, I really didn't feel like when I, really became super serious about, you know, kind of like, this is my calling and this is what I'm doing. I really didn't think I would have any support. It wasn't like I thought that culturally I was going to have, you know, this movement that, that I've now become aware of behind me. I really, I really didn't. Um, I'm, I'm thankful because that to me just means there's more people out there that are, you know, becoming aware of, of what, you know, what really needs attention in the universe. And, and I love the, you know, divinity is in all things. I mean, that's, I was on another interview pretty recently with a gentleman, uh, another MC, his name is, um, um, Apollo, um, Apollo poetry. And you guys should definitely check him out. He's kind of like the male version of me. Some people say, and we met in Sedona, um, a while back and, you know, he said, it's like, it's hard for, for me and and for him too to kind of even know what to call ourselves. And that's why I've sort of gone labelless because would I just really do believe in every, it's like, I believe in divinity and all things. And, um, every day I learn something new through study that just, you know, changes, changes me a little bit. And, you know, I'm just really thankful that there are people like you guys really dealing with this in a, in a fashion that, you know, kind of keeps up with the times and podcasting and, and, you know, making it available for people as an, as an outlet to connect. I think it's pretty awesome. 